Good evening and welcome to Paul T's World. It's August, it's high summer, it's eight o'clock in the evening and it's a lovely warm evening. And in this video we're going to have a look around the back garden and see what's in flower in summer. And in fact straight away we can have a look at the Brugmansia. Now this Brugmansia is called Charles Grimaldi and what I love about these tropical, semi-tropical plants is just how quickly they grow. I bought this in March for about five pounds and someone sent it to me in the post. It was about 12 inches long with a few little roots and just look at it now. Oh, and the reason I bought this Charles Grimaldi is because it scents better and stronger than any other angel's trumpet. Brugmansia, and indeed it does. In the evening, it's the evening when it scents. Absolutely gorgeous. So there we are, it's as tall as me from March to August. I do feed it quite often and I feed it with tomorite and you'll know all about tomorite because I spoke about tomorite in the previous video on feeding plants and I do water it every single day. If you don't water it, it will sulk and the leaves will wilt very quickly. However, as soon as you water it, it recovers. The dahlias flower nicely right the way through from June to the first frosts. I've got a few dahlias in the garden now and in fact this border was much narrower and I just dug it out from where these yellow ones are here. So I added all these in the front. Dahlias are so easy. All you have to do is in March go to a garden centre, buy some little rhizomes, uh, and they will cost about £3.99 and here I'll just show you I bought this one, uh, this one and this one here last year. Put them in and they grew straight away and flowered. So this is their second year. Now with dahlias, as you can see, the show of flowers is not quite so good at the moment. I feel that the very first flush of flowers on the dahlias is the best. However, you can keep them going right the way through the season to November in England uh, by deadheading. And let's just have a look at deadheading. So let's just see if I can find a flower that needs deadheading. <laughs> now in actual fact I did deadhead these earlier but I thought I'd left one that needed deadheading so we could see. Oh here we are. Here we are. So this is the moonrise. I love moonrise because the bees love it. Oh, and it grows beautifully, doesn't it? And here is a spent bloom. There we are. See how it's um, triangular? And let's have a look at a new bloom. See how it's round? So when you have a spent bloom, take it off right down to here. And you will probably see the next ones down below form. So once you take this off, the next ones will form. And then what have we got here? Here are the new ones coming through. There we are, there's a few there. Gorgeous one that. So as I say, that's an offshoot of Bishop of Landoff. Now this is a Bishop of Landoff and would you believe it, the day of my video, none of them are out. <laughs> but it's a gorgeous red. But just look at all the new buds that are going to come out in the next seven days or so. Beautiful. And I put this Bishop of Landoff here because the flowers are red 
And as I mentioned in another video, this particular border that I've got tropical plants in, or mostly tropical plants, I wanted to have a red theme. So let's see how well I've done and how they're doing in August. So we can start off with the irisene. It's growing nicely. I'm hoping that that will spread. I'm not quite sure if it does spread because I would really like to have a number of these across the front here. The little or the dwarf canna here, this is Happy Carmen, so it's got its red flowers. We've got the pink passion cordyline, very pretty. And look at this. Lobelia cardinalis. Lovely red. I bought this earlier this year, grown up and is flowering now. I would imagine it flowers right through the summer. We've got some of those coleus. I've dotted around in various places and the Camarops humilis. Love this. It's my first palm ever. Lovely. Brings out the new leaves from in the middle there down below. Oh, and here we've got the Tropicana canna. And I think that that is not a new leaf, but I think that is a flower. So excited about that because it's the first time I've grown Tropicana and I'm looking forward to seeing how the flowers are. The Abyssinian banana putting on a little bit of weight. Oh, and interspersed is the Persicaria. Lovely. Oh, and, and I bought that as a plug plant earlier this year. And there it is in there. I've taken lots of cuttings from this. It's so easy to propagate. And yet, even though I've taken all these cuttings, it's here, it's here, and it's through there growing towards the pond. See the little white flowers? And here's a second Brugmansia. The reason I'm laughing is because people have reported that their Brugmansias are being eaten this year, and so are mine. Just look at the leaves. Something has had a good feed. Now, people are saying it's capsid um, insects. I don't know those insects, but people say that, that this kind of damage is the capsid. Some people say it's earwigs. I really don't know. We do have flowers on this. I grew this as a cutting last year, and then I overwintered it in the garage. It is flowering well, although this is a Although this week the flowers are over here, but it'll be producing, as you can see, here and here and here, lots of new flowers. They don't last long, but they do produce lots of them. Oh, and just in the middle here, we've got some purple loose strife. Not particularly tropical for this bed, but I do like it. And so do the bees. This is a large, Canna. And I've just forgotten the name of it. It is, oh yes, I've just got a little tag there, Eric Neubert. And I got this on the internet in March as a cutting. Big canna. The person who sent it me said they don't flower readily, and if they do, it's towards the end of the season rather differently from the Cleopatra. They flower straight away. Look at this. Again, I bought this earlier this year. Uh, nothing flowering here, but we do have growing well the Euphorbia mellifera. I've put in the ground some Aeonium. These are Schwarzkopf. We've got the Fatsia spider, Fatsia spider's web, and my first banana. 
Musa Baju. And it's doing well, look at this. I've planted a tetrapanax. Let's see how it does. I'm a little bit nervous that it will send up pops yards away, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And here's the amethyst, the amethyst, the oak leaf, Quercifolia hydrangea. So it's got two large panicles this year. And now let's move over to the shed bed and see how it's doing. And some of those plug plants that I planted last year, most flowered last year, but not all. And some of those that didn't flower have flowered this year. And here we have, this is uh, one of the two apple trees I've got in the garden. And this is the eating apple, it's James Grieve. And it is doing better than it has ever done. The other apple tree is just over there. Again, lots of apples on that one. It's a Bramley. The silver birch looking gorgeous in the late evening sunshine. And let's just see what we've got in the shed bed that's in flower. And first of all, we've got the lace cap. This is a Zorro. So the Zorro hydrangea, it has dark stems. This is the one I moved from the front garden last year. It tends to grow upright, more of an upright fashion than some of the mop heads. And in this particular case, look how blue the lace caps are. They're just over now, they're past their best. But yeah, I liked it blue. It's a nice change. I don't have things that are very blue, even though I think my soil is a little bit acidic. And we move over here to the echinacea. Now these are from the plug plants of last year. They grew but didn't flower last year. They've sent up all these flower heads. Oh, now this is interesting. This is the phlox, the larger phlox. And in another video, I said that I'd given it the Chelsea chop. So that is reducing the height of some of the larger, the larger stemmed uh, herbaceous plants at the time of the Chelsea Flower Show, which is in May. I cut the front ones back and I left the back ones. Now the back ones now I've actually chopped down because the flowers have finished. But it meant that the ones in front were later, even though they're, they're getting over now. You can see how much later these were than the ones behind, which are totally finished. Yeah, so you can see there how useful that Chelsea chop is when you reduce maybe by half, a third, a half uh, of some of them. You could, you could chop all of them back, but I feel it's best to just chop the front ones. Then you have something that's not going to flop. It's going to support the flowers from behind. And then the flowers that receive the Chelsea chop will be later, maybe three weeks later, four weeks later, and they're coming through as the other ones are fading. So it does work and I'll do it even more next year. Oh, and we can just see behind. There's another paniculata. And that one is Pinky Winky. It's still whitish, but in a few weeks, that's going to go the most gorgeous pink. Love it. The Sweet William now is over. It's the last of the Sweet William. We've got the Lickness, the Rose Campion. In fact, we've got a white one here. The white one as well as the red one. So as the flowers fade, like this one here, if we deadhead them, just say back to there, they will grow new flowers behind. And so if you do spend a little bit of time deadheading, you'll be rewarded with flowers right the way through the season. There's the Pinky Winky. Love it. What I like is look how strong those stems are. They are holding those panicles beautifully upright.
Most of the agastache are finishing off. And here we have another paniculata hydrangea, and this one is Silver Dollar. Oh, and Rubecchia behind. They are another of the plug plants where I received 80 plug plants for £15 from Thompson & Morgan, and nearly all of them took uh, the, the Rubecchia and the Echinacea, which are flowering now, didn't flower last year. So in their first year, they didn't flower, but they're flowering now. It's been a really successful bed, the lawn bed. It's filled with shrubs to give it body year round. And then I've got the plug plants, the perennial plants, which come through and flower in the summer. So let's turn around and see what's happening with the shed bed. Now, many gardens, including mine, have fewer flowers once it comes to high summer, to August. However, there's still some colour around. The penstemons I've deadheaded and now new ones are coming through. The sedum, autumn joy type sedums, they're going to be coming through and flowering beautifully in late August and September. So the bees and the butterflies will really enjoy that when there's hardly any other plants, flowering plants around. more agastache, plug plants, yarrow. I'm not quite so keen on these, mostly because they flop and I haven't looked after them properly. There's one flowering now. I wonder if I overfed them earlier on in the year because they're a little bit large and floppy. Now, I, th I like this. This is a mixture of a shrub, the paniculata, hydrangea, and the phlox. And I like the effect together like that. This is the phantom. And what I like about the phantom is once again, it has strong stems, maybe not quite as upright as the pinky winky, but these can grow really large beautifully large. In fact, I'm surprised how small those are. Maybe I haven't fed them enough. In the back there, we've got the Salvia Amistad. And just behind there is a little pink Moped Hydrangea. Oh, you can see how the Grisolinia the New Zealand privet is doing, that hedge I planted last year, early last year, it's doing well. I will be looking forward to it growing up as high as the fence, maybe higher. Oh, we've got some late bees here on the agastache. Oh, lovely to see the bees. Let's make our way over to a plant that we missed last year as I had a break in the videos and it is the tree lilies. They come up every year. Last year they were about five feet high and this year that one must be six or seven feet, although this one's less tall. Just behind is the lace cap hydrangea. It's decided to be a little bit blue and a little bit pink this year. This is a cutting from the one that is over here. This one. The rowan tree is laden with berries. The branches could only just support them. Just look how laden it is. It 
It has the creamy flowers in May and then these berries and the blackbirds will be eating these berries in September and by October they will have finished all of them. They're pretty in winter but I much prefer to see the birds eating the berries. So there is a little look round my back garden in high summer and in the next video we'll have a look at the front garden and I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.